What are you making for dinner? Compost. Looks good. Compost and, uh, I don't know, Beyond Burgers. That can be fun. What's the difference? <laughs> you taste them and tell me. Actually, they do look different. They are. That's what I'm going to show. Um, we're going to talk about video number three. Um, which is when your daylily seedlings start to get some green on them and they start to get tall. If you started them in little cells like this, um, they're going to run out of space to grow. I could probably leave these for a while. They're, they don't have to be potted up right away, but I am going to just do it because I need to get a jump start because I have another round of these coming. Um, so I have a tray and what I'm going to do is just give them another... Um, I'm going to pot them up and give them some more room to grow and to establish their roots and then you're going to really see some top growth. Uh, I'm going to use red solo cups like I did before last year. These are all being reused um, and they already have the drainage holes in the bottom of them and I have a huge tray that came with my gardener supply light system and that's what I'm going to use because it's super helpful um, to hold them all and get them all under the lights. It fits perfectly. So I'm going to show you the difference now um, when you pot up your seedlings, because here's where your seedlings want to be fed a little bit more um, than when they first sprout. We have a couple different options for potting mix. So I've gotten a lot of questions about which potting mix to use, um, which one is better. The answer is there is no better um, option. It's more about just knowing when you have to feed your plants um, and knowing what's in your potting soil and what kind of nutrient content is in your soil because not all potting mix is um, created equal. So for example, um, ProMix is basically a high porosity, um, you know, moss and perlite uh, mixture. So it's very light. There's not a lot in this. This is a very good growing medium for um, seed starting and for like root cuttings and for propagation because it's just light, it's porous, it allows the, the fine roots that you want to grow um, to get down into the soil easily. But after a while, you need to start supplementing and feeding with fertilizer. So if you go with the, oh, by the way, this is called a soilless mix, by the way, because it's not soil. <laughs> There's no actually earthy composty stuff in there. Um, so sometimes you'll see this um, growing mix or seed starting mix uh, called a soilless mix. So that is that one. Uh, the other one is an earthy composty soil blend. So this one, you can tell the difference between the two um, in the texture. This one is loaded with nutrients. This is compost based potting mix. So you are going to have to feed your plants a lot less uh, because you know, the food's already in there. So only when you need to really pot up and you'll know um, when you start to see the roots get a little root bound and the plant starts looking like it's outgrowing its pot, um, you'll want to supplement some food there until you pot up. But that's the main difference. Neither one of these is better, um, but with the soilless mix or pro mix or your seed starting mix, if you continue to use this, you will have to supplement with a, um, a fertilizer. I, I would do like a diluted uh, fish emulsion. Uh, every two weeks you can, fer you can um, fertilize and then just keep them watered well. At this point, you can bottom feed, bottom water, which means you can fill the tray underneath this with what you're gonna water with. So especially if, you have, if you're gonna do the fertilizer solution, you can fill the bottom tray and just let the seedlings um, and the soil soak up um, the fertilizer mix. If you do that, you wanna give it like maybe five, 10 minutes and then empty the excess out because you don't want standing water in the bottom of your tray. I, that's like the proper way to do it. I kind of water from the top and I do it in the morning. So that way the grow lights um, kind of have a chance to dry out the foliage a little bit. So I don't, I haven't, I haven't had a bad experience with that, but I do cheat that way. I don't always bottom water. It's kind of a pain in the butt for me. Um, if I'm in a hurry and I'm, you know, and these are a little bit bigger, this tray might be a little easier to do, but you see how deep it is. There's no way I want to move all these to dump out the water. 
So I really do just kind of eyeball watering at a certain point. Plus these are big enough where damping off is not gonna happen. They're really susceptible when they're younger. Um, and these are babies, but they're, they're, getting some, they're getting some height and some green on them now. So, you know, that's really the gist. You definitely should try to bottom water, but you know, truth be told, I don't really follow all the rules. <laughs> I kind of just, um, you know, I kind of do what's convenient for me. I haven't had any adverse things happen by top watering at this at this stage, so that's that's good. So if you want to cut corners, don't, maybe we don't could, tell them I said so, but sure. Go maybe ahead. we could top water some of those cups and play some beer pong. What do you think? Uh, well, I know it looks like we're gonna, right? That'd be a lot of beer. That'd be on the floor. I'm a one-hit wonder. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do that anyway. So. Um, what I'm going to do, so just for my mix, just so you guys know, what are you after over here? Something must have went under the stove. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is basically mix these um, for my next potting up episode, which I'm going to do now. Um, and I'm going to move each one of these individual seedlings into a cup. Um, and I'm going to use a mixture of these two things. I'm still gonna have to fertilize a little bit at some point, um, and you're gonna have to get into a regimen of fertilizing anyway, because even if you use this much of the real compost-based potting mix, at some point, the seedlings are gonna use up all of the nutrients in this cup. There's not really that much in there, but you will buy yourself some time um, with fertilizing if you use the compost-based mix. But what I have that I'm using is the 4B, this is good for seedling germination, for soil blocking. If you've ever started seeds by soil blocking, that's always fun. Um, so as you can see, I have the perlite mix, not the perlite mix, um, the pro mix with perlite in it. Um, already filled in there. And I'm gonna add kind of an equal part of the compost mix. All right. And then I'm gonna get my gloves on and this is all dry so I have to uh, pre-moisten it which I will do but I'm going to mix this all up right now that way it gets a little bit of really good growing medium and has a little bit of nutrients to get them going before I really have to worry about um, them starving If now, you, can somebody buy some of this stuff all mixed up in a bag and not have to go through all this stuff that you, you're going through? Uh, I mean, you can choose not to use the soil or the seed starting mix and just go for the, um, the, the potting mix. Yeah, if you get a potting mix, it's totally fine. It's ready to go. Um, be careful, the chemical fertilizer ones. Sometimes the potting mixes have chemical fertilizers in them, um, which can be a little too strong for the root size of those um, babies. So... You want to just just get an organic kind of a high quality one if you can your seedlings will appreciate it so the difference one thing too with the soilless mix one thing that can happen when you're growing your your daylilies indoors is you can get fungus gnats they are the most annoying things. If you've ever had fruit flies on your fruit in the summer or you get like, you buy something from the grocery store and then all of a sudden you realize you have like gnats flying around. They are two different things, the fruit flies and fungus gnats. But the fungus gnats act just like the little fruit flies. What they do is they love moist soil under the light so they get heat and moisture and soil and they burrow in there and then their little larvae in there and then they just multiply crazy. So one thing you can do the soilless mix doesn't have all that organic material that mimics soil, so they don't like it as much. So that is one benefit to growing with a pro mix or a seed starting mix. Um, if you don't have the compost in there, they're less likely to go crazy. So I am taking a little bit of a risk by adding the compost-based potting mix, but um, one thing you can do to manage them if you do have them is to let your seedlings dry out quite a bit before you water. Don't leave standing water. Don't make them sopping wet. Don't you know bury them in water every day. Once I pop these up, um, they'll be able to go a couple days without being watered. And you really wanna check for the first inch of the soil 
if it's dry, then you can proceed to water or fertilize or whatever. But let that top layer um, dry out because that's where all the well, that's where all the babies are going to be. Can I put that in my sneakers to get rid of my foot fungus naps? Or no, no, no. Yeah, that's a whole other problem. All right. So one thing I wanted to show was um, one of the ways you can manage them. These are little yellow sticky traps. They look like cute little bees, which is kind of weird, but anyway. Um, you can get any shape of these. They also come in big rectangles, but you basically, oh, I have one in there actually, so I can show you. This guy, he's sticky. So what happens is fungus gnats are attracted to yellow. So they, if you have them and they're flying around, they're gonna go, oh, hey, it's yellow. And they're gonna go land on it and then they can't get off. So they're going to stick there, and that's where they will die a probably slow, torturous death. But it will help you manage, because the ones that can fly and hop around, they're not going to be mating. And you will manage some of them. It doesn't make them go away, but it does help with the population. I had them last year pretty bad. It didn't affect my seedlings, but if you don't manage them, they can affect the roots, because they can eat into the roots of your plant. So you do want to at least have some type of a uh, management solution. This is what I use. Also, when your plants get big enough, and actually right now I probably, once I pop these up, I may start with the fan. Another thing that will help with the fungus snacks is to use a little fan um, just on light, just a light wind, because it's gonna do two things. One, it's gonna kinda help keep that top layer of soil dry. Um, and the fungus gnats are really light, so they kind of don't like the wind. Uh, they're also um, going to start strengthening up your seed uh, or your, your seedling foliage. So this stuff is going to start to harden because down in the basement, there's no air movement. It's kind of warm. They have no, I don't know, they don't have run any real adversity down there. So this also will help mimic wind outside. It'll help to strengthen the plant. Um, it'll just help them grow a little bit stronger so that when you bring them outside to harden them off, they're kind of used to having a little bit of a breeze and they know how to handle it. So any seedlings that you grow actually from, from seed, at a certain point, once they get big enough, you do want to have a light fan blowing over them. So they kind of strengthen up and they're like, whoa, now you're blowing me over. They're going to get a little bit thicker and a little bit stronger. So that's how plants are really adaptable to their environment. I love petting my plants. Can I borrow a few of these for the laundry room? I'll put them over my sock drawer. Why? Foot fungus necks. Oh, jeez. No. No? No. Oh, well. Probably work better than bounce. Yeah. I don't know. Has that worked for you? Not really. <laughs> these are actually really kind of useful bags. So what's, what's so special them. about this soil from Vermont? Um... You know what it is? It's kind of like a fully, a full nutritional, it's like a fully balanced meal, like, you know, for plants. So it's also really good for soil blocking, which um, you know, if you've ever seen, I have a soil blocker. I did do that one year, but I just found that like starting them in trays was a little bit easier than trying to get them to soil block, stay together, plant them. It was just, it just got a little hectic for me. Uh, but this is like the number one mix for soil blocking. So they kind of air prune and root, um, air prune the roots when you do soil blocks. And so when the roots hit the side, because they're not in a container, let me, let me back up. When you do soil blocks, you're literally making soil in little squares. And then the squares are going into um, trays right next to each other. So there's no divider, there's no cells. Um, but what happens is when the seed sprouts and starts to grow, the roots go out and as soon as they hit the air, because at some point they, they're gonna, the roots are gonna exit. As soon as they hit the air, they turn around and go back in and use up all that extra nutrients. So it's not like they coil at the bottom, they don't like go out and all of a sudden you have this thing that looks like an octopus. It literally goes in and uses up all that space um, and all the nutrients in a soil block. So it's supposed to be healthier. And then you can keep potting them up. Like you can start in little tiny cubes, like sugar cube sized soil blocks for the smaller seeds. And then there's bigger soil blocks that you actually put the smaller sugar cube sized ones in. So you can continue, there's different size soil blocks. So you can continue to pot up in soil blocks until you're ready for transplant. But um, that's a little bit 
in, more involved, and I'm just kind of in a process of using uh, the six packs and potting up when I need to. But soil blocking is definitely good. It's a, it's a good, it's another way that you can um, do your seedlings in trays without having to um, use the plastic sack. Yeah, I blocked you out at soil blocking. You lost me there. I, you blocked me out at everything. Well, I'm not going to ask you to repeat that answer. <laughs> I don't know if I could, and I hope that was logical. I kind of like... I thought, of, I just asked you what makes the Vermont soil so special. That's, that's what... That's what I'm saying. It's really meant for soil blocking, but it really feeds the seedlings the best because it's compost based. Okay. I could have just said that. Yeah, that would have been a lot easier. <laughs> um, I mean, you can always just say, hey, that's not what I asked, zip it. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna get this um, pre-moistened and wet it down, and then I'm gonna pot up a first, the first couple of daylily babies. So how are you going to get that moistened down there? I'm not, you are. You're going to take this to the shower and you're going to take that hose and you're going to soak it up until I can move it around and it's nice and moist. You want me to walk around it with my bare feet maybe? I do not. This is, we're not making wine. We don't want to breed the, the foot naps. Oh my God, could you imagine? With the other fo soil really fungus. That's really kind of gross. I don't even want to talk about that anymore. <laughs> All right. Oh, God. And once again, this is why you should not do this stuff in your kitchen. All right. It's all yours. All right. So I have to go. Yes. Your job is to take this into the bathroom and take the shower head and soak it down. All right. Time for a bathroom break. Did I do a good job? I don't know yet. I'm still mixing. We'll see, though. Ah, we're a little white. Was it heavy? No, not really. And then he didn't do it right. Well. <laughs> and how much maybe water I'm weight just has? strong. Oh really? Yes. Oh. You had the fungus gnats helping you? Well, I didn't want to get my feet dirty, so I decided not to put them in there. Yeah, this might be just a tad bit more. Looks good though. Oh, it smells good. Is that weird? It's got to be the, the compost one because that one doesn't really smell, but that one has like earthy material in it. it smells like wet goat. Oh. oh my god. Now we're starting to feel good. So, on a moisture scale, what? how much moisture do you get? Eight for the sand? Don't That's, want it too muddy? You don't want it muddy at all. And you want to squeeze it? Have it stick together like that without any water coming out. Don't you remember? Didn't you pay attention to the last I know, video? I feel like we've done this before. Then why are you asking questions? Because you I feel like I didn't pay attention yeah. before. Yeah, did you jot that one down in your, in your memory? No, oh, I already forgot. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, all right, so anyway, so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna add a little bit to the bottom of this. And I'm not really gonna pat that down, but it's gonna probably be a little bit halfway. And then, what I should do is fill them all up so I don't have to keep taking my, my gloves off. Let's see, who's gonna be first? <gasps> How about these guys? Oh look, there's two in this one. Oh boy, how'd that happen? I wonder if I had an extra seed of the same one. Hmm, interesting. There's a double in that one. Indominus Rex times Teresa Dillon. That should be a fun cross. So Indominus Rex, we're going in. Oh, see, look at, now look at this little guy. See his little leaves are yellow. The yellow wing. So I'm gonna, I might put that one in straight compost based um, potting mix and see. Sometimes your seedlings will come up white, which is not good because that means they don't um, have chlorophyll. And that means that they won't be able to make their own food at some point, so they will die. So you definitely want all green seedlings. All right, I'm gonna take... And the other thing you wanna do, I have, some of these are marked with tags already, but some are only just marked on um, with stickers. So 
I have to write tags, which I, did I bring up? I did, look at this, I'm so prepared. Why did I ever doubt myself? So I'm gonna mark myself a note here. What do we have, Teresa Dillon? Indominus Rex. How about these names? Like, do you know there are just like thousands and it might be tens of thousands, might be hundreds of thousands, um, registered daylily names? How are you supposed to name a daylily if they're like all used? You gotta get really creative. Indominus Rex, although that's pretty creative. Um, times. Or you Teresa, could just name it after a spider. Teresa Dillon, she's a hybridizer by the way. That's why she has one named after her. <gasps> should I do that? Should or I, you could I? name them after clown pants. I know, there's a lot of clown names because Mr. Clown Pants is getting around these days. I actually have, um, I have a couple Clown Pants. Which ones? Couple Clown Pants seedlings. Or actually a couple, I have crosses of seedlings from Clown Pants. So I have one called Jones Lucky 13. And then that is crossed with a seedling that was through a looking glass, blah, 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 times clown pants, times undefinable kid. Like, I don't even try to pay attention to that, but it's supposed to have really good genetics. So, um, but anyway, so I have a lot of fun stuff. I have a lot of my own that I'm doing this year too. Um, I have some culpa uh, genetic seedlings. So culpa is a very, very good hybridizer. He's got very high quality stuff. Um, lots of really good traits, lots of rich saturated color, lots of good, you know, lots of good things that you want on seedlings to come. Um, yeah. So I'm going to get going on this. Now, the trick is to get these out, which you can just be creative. I like to use a butter knife because I can get all the way down to the sides and then pop them up. If they're ready to come out of the of the um, cell and they're kind of root bound, they'll come out really, really easily and you'll get the whole cell. But look, you can see nice roots, nice roots starting. Um, and you just want to keep it kind of in the same shape as it is when it comes out. Like try not to really mess with it too much. So here we go. So you're planting them at the same level as whatever um, soil level you had them in. You're labeling them. And then eventually you're gonna water these in just to make sure you get rid of any of the air pockets that are in there. And then those are gonna sit for a while until they really get root bound. I may or may not pot up some of my really most anticipated crosses into one gallon containers, but that will come later on. That'll be, that'll be in probably a couple months um, unless they really start taking off for some reason. But if this weather doesn't change, I'm gonna put them outside. It's crazy in January, like we've had 50s, all of our snow cover is gone, it's very muddy. Um, today was kind of cold, like it was 40, but I'm kind of looking forward to like cold temperatures. So it makes me feel like I have to do stuff inside. Like the dishes. <laughs> I would have done this video a lot earlier had I done the dishes and cleaned the kitchen, but... Really? Yeah. Even during the polar vortex, <laughs> I still recall doing dishes. Yes, well... Yes. Dishes are not my forte. I, I'm growing beautiful things. I cannot be distracted by mere housework. Yeah, it's funny because you normally give the dishes the cold shoulder, so... Yes, and they like that because they like yeah. hot water, so... Yes, so exactly. Hot. Me and dishes go together like... Uh, more than water. Um, but anyway, and I do my fair share, just saying. But anyway, I'm gonna get to this. Um, but if you have questions, obviously, you know, you're the only way to find me. Um, and then, what else? I think that's it for video number three. It um, is? I think so. I think that at this point, you're really just fertilizing um, on a bi weekly schedule or you can fertilize weekly, weekly. So a weak diluted solution of fertilizer, weekly. Got that? Um, so yeah, you could do that. I use the Neptune Tarvis uh, fish emulsion. I'm using the tomato and vegetable fertilizer 
this time because I'm really trying to get them to concentrate on the foliage and green foliage. We're not really looking for a, a blossom booster. We don't want a bud builder fertilizer. You don't want any of that kind of thing. You want a high nitrogen fertilizer for now because um, you really just want to get those roots in. You want to get the green work in. Um, another thing you can do, you can if you're going to use the seed starting mix too, I just thought of this, you can actually add um, bone meal or um, what's the other one? Worm castings. I knew it would come to me. Uh, and like that little powdery fine stuff that you get from like either a Spoma or any of those good brands. Just add the worm castings into that soil because that will also provide some nutrients and fertilization and start, um, help to stimulate the root growth. You can also do that. So use what you have, look at what you have. If you have a high nitrogen fertilizer that you can mix in, by all means do it. Uh, Cause that's really what we're going for here. And yeah, I hope everyone is having success with their seedlings and you don't feel overly concerned about them. At this point now you're just watching them grow and sort of heading off any problems. If you start to see them discolor or turn yellow or if you have fungus gnats, you really just want a remedy. If you haven't fed them and they're turning yellow, you might want to try that. Um, you know, they do need to eat. They don't have a lot of soil to provide them nutrients at this point. So once that seed doesn't feed them anymore, you really have to, you have to play mom. Time to feed the kids all the time. They're always hungry. Uh, so yeah, but that's it. So if you have questions, reach out. Uh, I hope this has been a fun process. I hope your seeds are all sprouting. I have a majority of mine that are, but my favorite cross, the Double Stunner Times Spider-Man's ne Nemesis, I started sprouting those on December 18th, and today, January 7th, what day are we in? I don't even know. January 7th, I think. Um, I got one that's starting to sprout. So that's like three weeks three weeks or more of like waiting for my most anticipated of my own crosses uh, to germinate. And I know a lot of you guys that purchased seed got that cross also. So don't, don't give up on it. It's a stubborn seed, or at least for whatever reason, it doesn't like the conditions I'm giving it, but uh, they are finally starting to germinate. I did get one out of my lot of 10. So um, yeah. So let me know how it's going. Post me pictures. I'm gonna post a picture of these guys on there and hopefully you can follow suit. Show me how your seedlings are growing. Show me what you're doing. Ask me questions if you need to. And we will do a check-in call probably in a week or so. Maybe we should end this video with uh, cracking open a can of beer and bringing back some memories, honey. Yeah, what do you I know, think? Right? I don't know. We have some extra cups over there. A little beer you know pong. Actually, if you help me pot up all these plants, We'll clear it off, bring them down to the basement, and we'll set up. Let's do it Saturday night. Really? Can Let's we play it. spin the bottle after that? No. Or why not? No. Come no. on. No. We'll see. I'm sure after I get one beer pong in you. Yeah. <laughs> after one game, I might be spinning a lot more than that. Cool. All right. <laughs> this is how yeah. we're going to end this oh. video. Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, honey. You're welcome. Are you taking a picture? No, I'm taking video. Dirty secrets behind the scenes exposed. I know, look, this is not fun at all. I just filled my first container out thinking that when I emptied this out, they were just gonna come out in nice neat little blocks and it just totally crumbled all over the place. This is the reality. Yes, nobody sees the mess <laughs> that happens behind the scenes. No. I, everyone knows if you're doing this, I think you probably made your own mess by now. Yes, we're the only family in the United States that cleans their kitchen with a shovel, a flathead shovel. Yes. Yes. I'm cheating. I'm just watering them in, cleaning up the cups a little bit. Am I gonna have to put a kitchen in the uh, greenhouse or what? You need a utility room or a utility sink. 
We need lots. So I'll design it. Don't worry. Oh, I'm sure. But it is helpful to have a sprayer, I will say. All right, so these are good and watered in. Back under the lights, baby. Okay, I'm officially out of the kitchen. And here is now what our little seedlings look like in a little bigger growing capacity. I'm sure that their roots are gonna be happy. The roots were so cool on them. Um, a lot of them still had the seed attached to them, but you could see the little fine hair roots um, coming off of them. So they're really starting to kind of get established and you know, put on some major root growth at this point. So I'm excited, but they look great.